Okay, here we go. So we're gonna make a very clickbaity title for this video um, based on something that was actually said to me about Zach uh, by one of his doctors who is no longer his doctor. And I'm not going to name that doctor because that is just a bad idea. I do know that doctor no longer works with children, so that's a good thing. I forgot my coffee. You don't need it. <clears throat> anyway, what the doctor said was that Zachary is the worst case scenario when it comes to autism. That he is a parent's worst nightmare. Which is kind of why that was that ceased being Zach's doctor because I mean that's a horrible thing to say to a person that's a horrible thing to say about a child because you know that's a load of crap well, and he, he, he's not that bad I mean he has his moments well he's 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 pretty rough he's like, difficult yeah, he's, yeah, he's difficult but he's pushy and he gets nightmare. aggressive but it's not surprising when you consider um, autism speaks and some of their advertising they don't do it so much anymore but they oh, used to God. that thing they put out about you know call in the national guard it's an emergency our children are being kidnapped you know the look at this horror show we live in kind of stuff it's like that you've seen some of those right oh god yes, they removed yes. most of those or or your <coughs> favorite the woman that she the was bagel. yeah the, oh, she she couldn't go out and enjoy a bagel at the deli because was of her, her child. autistic child sitting right there at the table, content, you know, just sitting here, just like this. Well, the thing is, you I've gone eat out to Bullshit. eat. Zach has gone out to eat many times because we have yeah. to when we go to doctor's appointments because it's so far away. And the thing is, is it a bit more difficult than maybe a standard eleven-year-old? Yeah. Yeah, he ain't got the patience. No, he's not. My printer is on. He's not patient. He he doesn't like waiting for his food, which is why we try to go to places where you can get something ahead of time. Like we go to Dairy Queen and we get their little five dollar lunch, which comes with ice cream, and we get the ice cream first because you can eat it that. gives him something to eat, and he eats ice cream slowly because he gets ice cream headaches if he doesn't. So, but you know, yeah, he's gone to other places before, and he makes a mess, and I always clean up the mess because you know. I'm not an asshole. Yeah, that's just nice. Yeah, it's like those people aren't... I mean, yeah, they're being paid to clean the place up, but they're not being paid to clean that mess up. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, he got to smear an old window. I know, he grinds his food into the table. But, you know, I can take him out. It's not an issue. It's not a thing I can't do. I can't take him grocery shopping because he eats the, the vegetables produce. and the fruits off the... You know, if they're there. Or he'll peel... This is so gross. He's done this before. Um, he'll get in the meat aisle... And he'll peel open packs of hamburger and put that. <laughs> raw hamburger in his mouth. It's disgusting. He'll also crush all the bread if he gets near the bread aisle. He'll just crush it and rip it open, the bags, because he wants to hear them pop like bubbles, which they mm -hmm. don't do. But. Yeah, you got to shop with him in the boxed and canned food aisles. Well, I just try not to take him grocery shopping whenever I can because it's just going to cause problems. I did go grocery shopping at Safeway once with him, and... Uh, he did so good through the whole trip until we're standing there in the checkout line. And, I mean, it was a real grocery shopping trip. That is always his worst part. <laughs> and we were standing there in the checkout line. And, you know, it was our turn. And I was just standing there waiting and ringing up all the stuff. And he just bolted for the door, <laughs> giggling like a maniac. And I had to chase him down. And the only reason he didn't get out the door is because he actually crashed into some guy. Just wham right into this dude. And the dude was looking around kind of confused like, what's going on? <laughs> so, you know, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And then he started laughing because, I mean, it's pretty funny when a random child just slams into you. <sighs> Luckily, the guy was fairly big because Zach's a pretty big kid and could easily take out a normal, smaller person. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're not expecting it. He is not small. No. He's, he's, like, a kid. he's like a refrigerator. But, yeah. Yeah, so, anyway, though. <clears throat> that doctor referred to Zach as a nightmare and the worst case scenario. And it just That's really bothered me. 
Well, it really bothered me. It's like, why would you say that about someone's child, like, at all? Well, yeah, well, yeah that don't make good sense. I mean, especially since you take him to a doctor and he usually, you know, if he's having an issue, you know, a moment on the way in. He's fine by the time yeah. he gets into the doctor's office. But, you know, it's just... The reason, the issue was that he was being seen for, I mean, it was a new appointment, you know, just a general checkup thing. But also we were discussing the not sleeping situation. Since Zach was a tiny, tiny person, he did not sleep well at all. You remember oh, when we were there God, and he'd sleep? Yes. There was a point when he was little and I was living with Heifer here. And uh, he slept for no more than an hour at a time. Wait. Yeah. For hours. Yeah, he'd wake up and he'd be giggling and laughing and bouncing around. And then, you know, four or five hours later, he'd fall asleep. And I'd think, oh, finally, I get to go to sleep now. And then an hour later, he'd be up again. So that was. And man, was that went on for an entire man. month. And I took him to a doctor during that month. And the doctor just kind of shrugged her shoulders and was like, well, uh, that's an autism thing. Well, then again, when he had that seizure and was unconscious for 13 hours after having multiple seizures in one day, and he went to the oh emergency God, room. Oh, God, that was insanity. Is this on par with him? He yeah. came up? He was unconscious. Unconscious. Not awake. And they thought, you know, oh, well, he looks fine. This is normal for him, right? Nope. No, my child's not no. normally unconscious. Normally he's awake, bouncy, happy, friendly. Mm-hmm. Up in everyone's face. But, uh, that was, that was, that was the worst thing ever. Like, they, the, the doctor grabbed, they did a lumbar puncture. The doctor grabbed the needle without having gloves on and stuck the needle in his back. It's like, uh, you could kill somebody. There are some hospitals you never go to. Yeah. That is the death hospital. Oh, well, the thing is, though, he'd been to the ER there before for that thing when he had something stuck up his nose. Mm-hmm. And that wasn't an issue. So it's really not about the hospital. It's about, you know, you got to be careful because whoever's on staff in the emergency room there, either you're going to get one of their good doctors or they're just going to shrug their shoulders. I mean, he had a seizure that morning at, like, 9 o'clock. And he... It was horrible. We had to get a person, a random neighbor, drove us to the hospital. Because there was no ambulance service where we were living at the time. That's fun. Yeah. And it would have taken longer to wait for the ambulance to come from the next town over than it took to walk around and find somebody to drive up there. Like, it was an hour mm. drive from where the ambulance was to where we were. And then an hour drive from where we were to the hospital. So, we just started knocking on doors until someone agreed to take us to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And he was unconscious the whole trip to the hospital. And he had more seizures in the car. And we got him there. And they didn't really... They were testing He was started to come to. And so they gave him ketamine to knock him out. So that he wouldn't squirm around. Because they wanted to do a CT scan and stuff. And so they did a CT scan. They did a lumbar puncture. They tried to get a urine sample. They uh, tried and failed repeatedly to stick an IV. They stuck him, I think, 20 times trying to get an IV line in his arm. And they just kept stabbing him. And they stabbed him, and they put the IV line in, but they missed the vein. And they just kept squeezing the bag to force the saline into his arm. And, I mean... He freak when they did that. Yeah, that was before they gave him the sedative, because they didn't give him the sedative until they finally got the IV line in, right? Then they sedated him. And, you know, it was 13 hours from when he had the first seizure to when he was finally awake and coherent again. He might have woken sooner had they not sedated him. but Yeah, and uh, so then they did that. And they were initially going to transfer him to the children's hospital, which would have been another two hours away. But then suddenly they came back and they were like, well, we're just going to let him go. We're going to maybe hold him overnight for observation, and then we're just going to let him go. So, he finally got checked into the hospital and sent up to a room for the night. 
And uh, 5 o'clock the next morning, the doctor came in and was like, okay, well, are you guys ready to go? Like, it's 5 o'clock in the morning. I don't have anyone nearby that can come pick me up. No, I'm not ready to go. I mean, my kid hasn't eaten anything. He's barely even conscious at this point. I'd like him to, you know, consume food instead of just being sent away. Yeah. So, shut up, we're making a video. Mm-hmm. What do you have to eat? Food. Shut up, we're making a video. Food in the kitchen. Make a sandwich. What so. is a Joe John crying out Jeez. You already know the answer to that question. No, I don't. But yeah, it was just. I'm pretty sure that's autistic too. That would be our dad. There you go. It's just. He's a little different. Yeah. Anywho, um, so yeah, Zach's had really terrible experience with doctors. The first terrible experiences were when he was little and we lived in Oklahoma, and the doctor literally refused to send him to a specialist after he'd been seen through early intervention. And the doctor's like, well, you don't want to get him a diagnosis, though, because then he'll be labeled, and then you'll have to deal with that for forever. You're better off just, you know, not doing that, just because yeah. he won't be able to ever get insurance or anything. Yeah, that was yeah, He it. didn't get diagnosed till you were up here. I know. He was one month shy of his fifth birthday when he finally got formally diagnosed. Yeah, that's a tad ridiculous. Well, that's a long waiting list anyway, but it would have been a lot faster had the pediatrician agreed to just give me a referral. Mm -hmm. And it's not like Zach was, you know, questionably autistic. It's like this is a kid who, you know, hits all the check boxes without any problem. Yeah. So, yeah, it was uh, quite a shitstorm. But uh, doctors, like, fail a lot because he's had a lot of doctors that have blamed every little issue he's got. They just shrug their shoulders and they're like, well, that's what autistic people do. Even the seizure, they're like, well, it's just his autism. I'm like, no. No, none of the symptoms of autism say seizure. That's not a no. symptom of autism. That's a symptom of epilepsy. So, it was just a good thing to have. You know, people don't die from seizures. Not they die really. from bashing their head during a seizure, but very mm -hmm. rarely does a seizure actually kill a person. Yeah, it doesn't happen very often. Which is weird to think about. But, <sighs> but yeah, there's just... Zach's been know recently because we did finally get him sent to someone who would help with the sleep thing and the first solution was that terrible phase of well we're just gonna have you go home and track everything he does all day for the <laughs> next month Fun. and so we did that and then came back and uh, they put him on trazodone to help him sleep which I'm sure is gonna some people are all like oh my god you shouldn't give kids medication don't drug your kids it's like yeah well some kids need it. Zach has done so much better since he sleeps now. Oh my god. Yeah, he's, he's having he's issues he's still, but oh my god. Yeah, but he's way calmer than he was. Oh god. He sleeps now. That's Sometimes he naps during the day, but that's not ideal. Man, everybody needs a power nap here and there. But, uh, yeah, he's got trazodone and melatonin to help him sleep. And that helps. It works. Just the melatonin alone did nothing. I mean, he fell asleep faster with it, but it didn't really work. So, yeah, it's been quite the shitstorm. Our camera's wobbling now. Yeah, that's because Dad stepped over the chair. I know. But, yeah, so he goes to the doctor now every month to see um, a behavioral specialist who is a psychologist, a nurse practitioner with specialization in psychology and something. I'm not entirely sure what his actual title is, but he's the guy that makes sure Zach is okay, helps mm -hmm. with dealing with behavioral issues that come up and everything, and oh my God, do they come up. Oh yes, he definitely he's, has his moments. Oh my, he's, he's been, he's hit puberty. Like that, and that's and, oh my god, puberty is a shit storm because he doesn't understand privacy. He doesn't. Zach is under the current diagnostic criteria. He's considered level three, which was previously called severe. Which I mean, he doesn't do things. He, he's the kind of kid you look at him and you know he Something is autistic. Wrong. Like 
every person, people, before he even does anything, there's been people like, oh, he's autistic, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's actually been, though, you know, you hear all these horror stories from these people about having an autistic kid and, like, going out in public. And I've gone out in some places with him and, like, Walgreens a lot to pick up prescriptions and stuff. And a couple times in my life, I've had people act like assholes towards us, towards him. Mm -hmm. um, well, you're going to get that here and there. One time, he was sick, like, really sick, and had just left the doctor for, you know, got a prescription for something. And he was coughing really, really bad. And he doesn't cover his mouth when he coughs. So I just try to stay close and, you know, I cover his mouth, whenever, you know, just like this whenever he's coughing because he won't wear a mask either. No. So I just, you know, whenever he starts acting like he's going to cough or really anytime he opens his mouth and he's sick and we're out somewhere, I cover his mouth. And this woman who was like, we were standing there waiting at the checkout. This woman who was walking through the door, uh, just some little grouchy looking old hag, he started to cough. <clears throat> And I was trying to, you know, deal with the transaction, so I wasn't watching him. But as soon as I heard the first, you know, kind of barky, growly, scratchy noise that you make when you're congested. <laughs> that, yeah, I put my hand up to try and cover his mouth. And this, 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 this just tremendous old cunt growled at us. <laughs> I mean it. She growled at us. And was That's like, cover your magic. fucking mouth when you cough. Looking at Zach. And... Had I not been in a hurry to get out of the store, I very likely would have started a bitch fight with that. I mean, I just, I wanted Slap to punch her. Oh, God. I wanted to punch <laughs> that old cunt. You don't use that kind of language like, I'm sorry, of a child. I'm sorry, you useless old whore that nobody ever gave you any love. But you know what? You do Go not. Fuck yourself. You do not use that you kind of foul well, language. Well, she wasn't saying it just in front of a child. She was saying it to him. It's like, I get he's big for his age, so he looks older than he is, but he's also very clearly disabled. Mm -hmm. You know, they're clearly very clearly, he's having some difficulties. And he was really sick. And I mean, as soon as he started to cough, I covered his mouth anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why those mind your own damn business things. I, mean, I know. You're like, you know. Don't go like this. Well, that's the thing, too, though. She walked right up to us to do that. It's like, back off. You won't have a bunch of germs in your face, you stupid old bat, if you just back the fuck away from people. Mm -hmm. Stay in your bubble. It just pissed me off. I just, <gasps> but for the most part, I mean, when he he's out in stores, you know, there was a, like like I mentioned earlier, the crashing into some random guy. You know, the dude didn't get pissed. For the most part, people take it with a grain of salt. Most people I've encountered. I mean, once in Portland when we went to that concert, <laughs> this woman was walking by in in like bike shorts. And we were sitting outside, you know, the Wiggles concert, uh -huh. waiting to go in. And he, she stopped because she had to wait to cross the road. And he reached up and he just grabbed her ass <laughs> and squeezed. And she turned around ready to slap someone. And she looked down and saw this <laughs> little boy staring up at her with the biggest smile on her face. And she's like, oh, oh my God. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> Uh, and, of course, I'm like, oh, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And, I mean, you know, oh, most people, they, they understand that kids have issues. I mean, he's stolen food off of people's plates in restaurants. And, you know, nobody's ever yeah, gotten people pissed. People giving him food in restaurants. He started acting up. Here. Does he want a French oh, fry? Oh, God. He, we, at Big Jim's, when we walked in that one time and we ordered our food, and we didn't even get a chance to sit down, he saw some other people eating, and he walked over, and he does that little thing where he, like, he doesn't. He does that weird thing when he wants to look at yeah, stuff yeah, where he yeah. tips his head back and looks down with his eyes instead of just looking over like he's like and the, these looking. these two ladies you know that were sitting there eating were looking at him and they're like oh do you want some <laughs> and it's not like he was tiny when he did this he was like eight and he was a big kid but you know he's cute and he's 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 good at he, he's, he's good at playing people face. he's got a very round baby face but he's mm -hmm. good at playing people. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, you know, they say autistic people can't read social cues and can't do this. It's like, maybe he doesn't really understand other people's social cues, but he knows. He knows how to, do, to make those little faces that will make people give him things. He knows. He knows mm -hmm. what he's doing. He knows he's cute, and he knows people like to give him stuff. And there goes a swather. Yep. It's very loud. But, yeah. He just... 
I've had a lot of experiences. There was one time after uh, he was in the hospital when he had the endoscopy done on his nose. And when we left the hospital, we had to stop in the Dallas to buy something, groceries, because, you know, hadn't been grocery shopping in forever. And, you know, he hadn't been able to eat before the procedure because it was under sedation. And so he was in a really bad mood. And we stopped when we got food first. But he was still in a really bad mood. And we stopped at the grocery store. And we're walking around, and this old guy was walking through the store with his wife. And Zach was sitting in the car, just, you know, head leaned against me, just crying and screaming and howling. And he was like six when this was going on. And this old guy, you know, you hear all the time people bitching about kids in stores. I've never actually seen that happen. Neither have I. But this, this old guy walking, you know, down the <clears throat> aisle... Zach picked his head up and looked over at these old people, and he just let out this howl of just, like, agony. Like, he was just, you know, everything was so terrible. And that old guy looked over at him, nodded his head, and was like, that's how I feel when they make me go shopping, too. <laughs> and so, yeah. It was just... Shopping is terrible. It really is. But... I worry because Zach has been, you know, a lot more aggressive lately. It is something to concern and with. And not just, you know, at home. Like, I mean, he pulled my hair and tried to bite my face again the other day. He tried well, to he's... grab my throat at the doctor's office. He is going to get a bit worse. <coughs> but, you know, what really bothers me is that time at school when he grabbed a little girl's hair. It's like, I'm used to him going after the adults, the people in authority positions. I'm used to that. But when he starts going after children, that's scary. And that's going to happen. I mean, because he's only just starting puberty. So he ain't hit the worst of it yet. Well, I don't know what's going to happen with him. He might mellow out again. It's impossible. But it's impossible to know what's going to happen. That's the problem. And, I mean, he's definitely having issues. Nothing seems to help and he might be bipolar too which is one of those lovely things where you know the doctor's like well I mean he shows some of the stuff but we don't know if that's just because some of those traits are common in autistic people too or is he actually bipolar also like there's no way of knowing no you can't exactly give him a proper diagnostic exam well yeah he doesn't